Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this video we're going to be doing uh, a little bit of work on the Mini Cooper. Um, basically what's happened is she's broke down. Um, so uh, driving along perfectly normally and then all of a sudden a load of lights came up on the dash and the car lost all power completely um, and then refused to start. Um, the battery was completely dead, completely flat. Now, um, obviously, my first thoughts are pointing at the alternator and that's what I suspect. What I've done is I have uh, charged the battery, um, I've refitted it. What we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna fire the car up, um, we're gonna check the voltage at the battery, and obviously that will give us a good indicator whether the alternator is actually doing its job. So first things first, what, what we'll do, we'll take all of this good stuff off here. Um, so we can uh, so we can get into the battery and if I get my multimeter out set it to volts okay as you can see now hopefully you can see that I've got 12.52 volts at the battery right now so we're good the battery is um, the battery is perfectly healthy what I need to do now is just fire the car up. Obviously she started perfectly fine. And now, if the alternator is doing its job, I should expect to see somewhere around the 13 and a half to 14 volt mark at the battery. And as you can see, we aren't. So we're getting, we've got 11.76 volts at the battery and that will just drop down as the, uh, as the engine runs and the engine is basically sapping all the voltage out of the battery. Don't forget it's doing everything right now, spark plugs, ECU management, everything. So um, it won't last long, probably about 10 minutes and then it would start to struggle. Alternator is down here and as you can see, it looks fairly accessible, but trust me when I say it's not. So, there's quite a bit involved, what I'll do, I'll stop the engine really quickly. Yeah, um, as I said, quite a bit involved uh, in getting that sucker out, um, because it's not as straightforward as you would think. Um, we've got to delve into this quite a bit, quite a few things have to come off in order to give us good access. And that is the reason why this job would cost you so, uh, a fair old bit in, uh, in labour. The, the actual price of the alternator isn't too bad. I managed to pick up a reconditioned Bosch one for £80, uh, direct from Bosch. So that's um, a bit of a bargain, really, as alternators go. But yeah, the labour on this job is, uh, is the killer. And that's why we're here. We're, uh, we're trying to save money. So hopefully you'll, uh, hopefully you'll follow along and we'll, uh, we'll get this alternator switched out without too many dramas. Thanks for stopping by. Right then, um, so obviously we're going to be working with the electrical system, so it makes sense obviously to disconnect the battery. Safety first, first things first, let's um, disconnect the battery terminals, negative first. It's literally just a little 10 mil nut on each one, just undo them and the whole thing will just come off dead easy like so. And then we can pull the battery completely out of the car, it doesn't need to be in here. And again. 10 mil bolt either side. Disconnect the vent and then pull the battery out. Okay, there we are. That's the battery disconnected and completely free from the car. Right. As I said before, this job is a pain because whilst you can see the alternator, it looks like it's really, really easy to get to. It actually isn't because you wouldn't be able to get it out of there. Um, now, the, the most straightforward way of removing that alternator is actually to take the inlet manifold off. In order to take the inlet manifold off, you've got to take the throttle body off. In order to take the throttle body off, you have to take the air box off. Now, so that's what we're gonna do. 
We'll start with the airbox and we'll move forward. Um, underneath here, we've got the fuel injectors. They have to come off as well. Um, sounds like a lot of stuff that has to be removed in order to get that alternator out, but this is the most logical and straightforward way of doing it, believe me. So first things first, airbox. Right then, air cleaner. What we need to do is disconnect the harness from here. Sit the cable tie, which obviously we'll replace later. And then just pop the harness out from the airbox. Okay, got a couple of bolts that hold it in place. As you can see, it's a little bit worse for wear, but obviously we need to uh, keep hold of it. Uh, there is another bolt in here somewhere. I can't see it right now, but there is supposed to be two that hold this in place. Um, probably, it'll probably become apparent in a minute. What we need to do is pop this clip. Obviously, we'll replace this with an, either a new one of these clips or a Jubilee clip on when we come and put it back together. And then we can pull the hose off. And then we've got a, we do have another bolt holding this in place. I can't, can't actually see it at the minute. Let's have a good look around. Ah, right, I think it feels like it's underneath. Not actually a bolt what it was it's like a little like a little lug that engages in there which actually was really really easy to uh to undo so yeah um came off pretty simply so yeah the, just the one bolt at the front and then that little lug right then as you can see we've got a, we've already made ourselves a bit of room down here now what we need to look at next is the uh is obviously the throttle body um and and that is this assembly just here on the side of the intake manifold Right then, throttle body. What we're going to do first is we are going to remove the hose completely from the throttle body. And again, we've got another another one of those crappy factory clips, um, which again we'll replace with a, a Jubilee. Um, disconnect. Oops. Disconnect the vent hose. The breather hose, should I say? There we go. Right, that's the hose off. As you can see now, we've got a we've got fairly decent access to the throttle body itself. What we need to do is pop this cover off, just press the clips at the back and it comes off quite easily. Right then, what we've got here, this here, is a vent hose for the fuel, uh, basically for, for the fuel tank. Um, what it does is it draws va uh, the, the excess vapour from in the tank, um, comes through this, this basically like a purge valve and that vapour then gets burnt off um, as part of the combustion process. Um, quite simple really, uh, but what we need to do here is we need to remove it. So what I'm going to do is try my best to get in here to release this clip, which is quite rusty, so I'll be replacing this as well. Um, sometimes when they build these cars, they don't take into account that some somebody's going to want to get in here to have access to it to flame in repair the repair the thing so quite often the orientation of these clips isn't how you'd want it to be 
and they're particularly troublesome when rusty. Come on, we're almost there. There we go, right. Should be able to pull that off. As you can see, this has been on here for a long time. There we go, right. Pop the vent hose off of the fuel rail. It's just held it in these little clips. We'll sort that out later. We don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, electrical connection removed. Right, what we've got here, one, two, three, four bolts, 10 mil. Now, important to note, behind this throttle body, there is a ceiling ring. And this one does need to be replaced on refitting. Um, don't skimp on it, just replace it with a brand new one. For the, the uh, inlet manifold, it's not, too important that they replace, basically replace them on condition. If they look knackered, then, then replace them. Uh, if they look okay, a little bit of red rubber grease wouldn't go amiss, refit them. And the last one. And there we go. And here's the ceiling ring that I was telling you about. Yeah, replace that with a brand spanking new one. Don't, don't scrimp on that. Get a brand new one, get it in there when we refit. Okay, so that is the throttle body removed. Next, inlet manifold. Okay, inlet manifold then. What we need to do obviously is we need to remove all of the fuel um, fuel injection system from the manifold in order to be able to get the manifold off. So there's quite a bit we need to do, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, what we've got here, we've got a servo control just down here. You see this little red collar? If we give that a push down all the way around, we should be able to pull her out like so. It's like a, it's like a collar that uh, grips it once it's extended. It's kind of like um, speed fit uh, fittings for uh, water hoses in your house and stuff like that. It's fairly, it's fairly easy to disconnect, so just push that to one side. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to depressurize the fuel system. Again, it's not as not as crazy as it sounds. Uh, just on the end here, you've got this little, it's like a little uh, bicycle valve effectively. Now what we're going to do, this will spit out a bit of fuel, hence the reason why I've got the tissue. As you can see, and just depress it until all the pressure's gone, basically. And as you can see, we're all good. Nothing else is coming out. So that is now depressurized. It really is that easy, nothing to it. Okay, under here we've got the fuel pressure regulator, which has got this little clip on it. Don't bother pulling the clip off, you don't need to. But under here, we've got the little vacuum hose, which we do need to pull off. It's quite tight on there. There we go. Just pull the vacuum hose off the bottom of the regulator. Right, four fuel injectors. On the side here, we've got a little red, little red tab just here. And what we need to do is we need to lift that tab up. I don't need to pull it as far as I did. But then once it's up, you can press on the, squeeze it together and it should come off so it can be a little bit fiddly so just bear that in mind give it a little squeeze and pop pop the connector off of each one right obviously I've got four of these to do so what I'll do I'll get all of them disconnected and then we'll bring you back okay as you can see that's the four um, connectors for the injectors removed. 
as I said before, it's just a case of pulling up the little red locking. It's like a little locking tab. You can see it better now. You can see what it does in here. When that's um, engaged, it allows that to drop back down, but obviously it has to be plugged in in order to do it. And there's the little release there. They were just really awkward to get into. This one, for some reason, put up a bit more of a fight than the other three. Anyway, um, what we'll do next, there's a connector down here. We need to remove that one. Take that one off. And we'll remove that one as well, because otherwise it'll be in the way when we come to um, under the inlet manifold. There is a tie wrap on that one. Okay, right. What we can do actually now is pull these little clips forward here and then the, the cabling for the injectors lifts off the mountains um, and we can just push it to one side. We don't need to do anything else with that. That's not going to be in the way. Right, uh, here we've got another one of these push fit connectors similar to the one that was on the vacuum line and we do need to disconnect that. Again, this is the one for the, if you also anticipate losing a bit. We need to do the same thing again, whereby we, uh, there we go. Uh, we did lose a little bit of fuel, but not, not too much. Well, I'll do actually just wrap that towel around it to catch any, any more that's going to drip out, but obviously it's petrol, so it'll it'll evaporate by itself in a moment. As long as it's not smoking around it, we should be okay. Okay, we're now at a position where we can uh, take the uh, fuel rail off the inlet manifold. Um, and all it is, is these two bolts here, these two 13 mil bolts. So if we take the first one out, and then the second one. Now, one thing to note here is it's not actually 100% necessary to remove a fuel rail from the inlet manifold. To get the inlet manifold off, you take the whole thing as a one -er. um, But some people might like to know how to do it. Now, once those bolts are removed, we can gently pull the fuel rail off. And there we are. So, uh, here's a few, the injectors. Keep the injectors on the fuel rail. We don't need to take them off. But these O-rings here, um, on reinstallation, if they're a little bit knackered, just replace them. Simple as that. There's, uh, they're, they're pretty cheap. They won't, uh, they won't cost much. Um, on reinstallation, we'll give them a little bit of light lubricant. A little bit of engine oil um, is fine. Uh, you know, or petroleum jelly uh, works just as well as well. So, um, obviously there's going to be a bit of fuel dripping out of there, as you can see. A little bit of fuel dripping out, um, but I'll put that to one side. Right, there we are. So, as you can see now, we've got fairly decent access to uh, to the inlet manifold. And yeah, there's a couple of clips down the front here, which I just need to pop off. And there we go. I think we're pretty much there. So, next, inlet manifold. Okay, now we've got all of that uh, that junk out of the way, we can see the bolts holding the manifold onto the cylinder head. There's one, two, three, four, five of them. This one here has got a coolant hose running in front of it, but you can you can get into it, the one right at the end there. So we'll do that one first. Just under them all. On this one, 
obviously the dipstick has to come out the dipstick needs to come out anyway otherwise we can't uh, we can't actually get the inlet manifold off so put that to one side as well and obviously don't let it get covered in rubbish should be all of the bolts. There we go. Three, two, three, four, and five. As you can see, they had a little bit of locking compound on them. So what we'll do, we'll clean the old stuff off and we'll, uh, we'll pop a bit on when we refit them. Now, as you can see, it's fairly loose and not a lot stopping it coming in. Now, under here, you can see there's a hose here connected to the manifold. It goes in through there, underneath, up to here. That'll pop off. Simple as that. Now there is a clip underneath the manifold that this coolant hose goes through. So what we'll do is just pop it off. There we go. And we should be able to maneuver it out now things like this obviously go up to the fuel rail uh, wiring. When we reinstall this, we've got to remember to put it through. Otherwise we'll be, we'll be struggling to find the connector and then just maneuver it around everything. And that is the inlet manifold removed. Now these four here, these are the ones I said, um, if they look like they're absolutely flat and knackered, then replace them. I probably will actually, because these look like they're a little bit, a little bit squished. So yeah, I'll, go, um, I'll, I'll get another four of them, um, along with the throttle body uh, seal as well, and uh, yeah, replace them all. Okay, so now, as you can see, we've got decent access to that open here. So let's get stuck into the job that we actually came here to do. Okay then, as I said, we're going to start getting on with the uh, the actual act of removing the open here now. So in order to do that, well, one of the first things we need to do is remove the drive belt. Now, um, access is very, very tight. It's a mini. Um, as the name suggests, everything's quite small and compact. And in order to get in to uh, get the drive belt off, what I had to do was um, remove the inner, the inner the plastic arch. It's only held in with a couple of little uh, plastic screws. It's not difficult to get off at all. Um, obviously, take the wheel off and all that good stuff. And then you've got better access to get in under here, into the belt, um, and uh, to be able to take the tension off and stuff. Now. The tensioner is this device just here on the end of my screwdriver. Hopefully you can make that out. And there's the pulley wheel on the end of the tensioner. Now there's two things I want to point out on the tensioner itself. And that is this little hole here. That little hole there and that little lug there on the tensioner. Um, that little protrusion on the tensioner. Now what I've got here is a little... Um, a little four mil machine screw. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock the tensioner in position using this screw. So what I need to do, um, on the actual tensioner itself, there's a little square drive. Um, and again, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to make that out. Um, it's just at the very end behind the wheel. And that will engage on the dri drive here. We can move it out the way and then lock it in position using this little bolt. So what I'll do, I'll get on with all that. It's gonna be very, very difficult for me to film it, um, but hopefully once I've got it in the position, you'll understand how I did it and what, what I went through in order to achieve it. So I'll get it in, I'll get it locked in position, and then uh, I'll bring you back, and then uh, I'll show you it in the lock position. Okay, there we are. That is the, uh, the belt tensioner in the locked position. As you can see, um, the, there's a little four mil screw just holding 
holding the tensioner in the relaxed position and I am now able to pull the belt off of each of the pulleys again I'm doing this by by sight because I can't uh, sorry by feel because I can't actually really get in there to see what's going on um, because again there just isn't any room Pump, pump, the water pump, and the alternator. And there we go. There's the belt. Now, obviously, while it's off, give it a good inspection. Um, if there's any cracking at all, just replace it. But that one actually looks okay, so I'm not going to worry about replacing that right now. That was in pretty decent order. Okay, so now we've got the belt off, we can actually remove the alternator from from the block. So. Let's dig into that. Okay, so as I said, now we've got the belt off, we can start getting the alternator off. Before we can actually undo the bolt, uh, the mounting box for the alternator, we need to electrically disconnect it, and that's a multi plug. And then the main cable here, which is literally just a 13mm nut on the back. Undo that. And then disconnect it, just like so. I'll pop the nut back on it, so that I don't lose it. Um, I'm not sure if there's a nut on the new one. There might be. Um, if there is, then uh, obviously we won't need that nut. Right. On the alternator itself then, the mounting uh, bolts. There's two at the top here, one and two just here and then there's another one exactly the same underneath now there's absolutely no way in hell that I'm going to be able to show you the one that's underneath because there's just no room so you just got to take my word for it um, it's a real pain to get into um, so right I think I'm on it now let's give it a little yeah, there we go okay and then just wind her out to get into uh, not quite not quite finger loose as yet it's one of those ones where it goes it feels quite loose on the ratchet but when you try and undo it with your fingers it doesn't barely enough room to actually get the bolt out so what I've done I've pulled it out it's actually disconnected from the block but it's still in the hole in the alternator I'll explain more in a minute as to why that is now <coughs> undo the top the top two once this one comes out this heavy alternator is going to want to fall so I'll make sure that I've got hold of it all right and there 
thing to go. And there's the alternator removed from the car. Now, as you can see, the bolt, um, the housing for the bolt on the actual alternator is quite deep, but there wasn't enough room between the alternator and the radiator to pull the bolt all the way out. So once it's out, I just left it in like that and then it'll come off. Right, so there we go. That is the alternator for this Mini Cooper completely removed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it a day uh, on this video. We'll make this a part, a two part um, effort. We'll make this part one, which is obviously the removal and then part two will be the refitting. Um, what I've done, I've uh, put a little bit of workshop rag down each of the ports uh, just to stop anything getting in there uh, down at the valves. Um, it, and obviously there's, there's a lot of crap around here. So yeah, it's just, it's just a good idea. Okay, yeah. Um, a lot of stuff has to come off in order to be able to get down to the alternator um, but uh, it's you know it's not terribly taxing it's just time consuming um, as opposed to anything else so so yeah but anyway guys thank you very much for stopping by and watching this video and I hope to catch you all in uh, part two um, if you want to uh, leave a comment on the socials then they're all linked below um, and uh, yeah I'll, uh, I'll see you all for part two take care guys thanks very much for stopping by and bye bye now